Hi, Archie. Hi. How are you? Are you waking up from a nap? Yes. Oh, boy, that sounds awfully good. Maybe we could just both sleep for the next 30 minutes. <laughs> well, that would be kind of funny for our YouTube viewers to watch both of us snoring or sleeping. All right, well, I am glad to see you and I am looking forward to getting your help tonight because tonight we're looking at some actual Chinese words written by someone who I don't think is Chinese. And I think they messed up a few little details. So having an expert like you will be very helpful. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen. Can you hear that buzzing sound behind me? You don't hear a, buzz, a buzzing sound? Well, there is a buzzing sound and it's coming from the lights up on my ceiling, the ceiling in my room, the lights are going So I am going to, um, there's three lights up there. Let's see if I can show you. There, can you see the three lights? Well, anyway, if I go down to just two lights, it's still buzzing. And if I go to one light, it stops buzzing. Isn't that interesting? So I'm gonna go to one light so that it will stop buzzing, but I will become darker because the room will be darker. So hang on a minute. All right, well, the room is a little bit darker, but I still have this lamp right here. It's kind of hard to see it, there it is. So maybe that will help. Okay, let's see here. And actually when I put the iPad in, here's the iPad, right? When I put it in front of my face and it kind of makes my, <laughs> I'm gonna end up looking like a ghost, like a spooky ghost in a dark room. <laughs> I don't know. We're reading the wrong kind of story for a spooky ghost. That would have fit better with, uh, well, Jigsaw Jones and the Haunted Scarecrow, right? Okay. Let's see. Arla Harry. Uh, oh, Honey. the horrible Harry with the, uh, the uh, drop of doom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, now we are going to learn a few words from China. And we have already found the mistake here. And I know what it is. Can I say? Can I say? Okay. Well, when we're saying words in Chinese, every word we say or every syllable has four possible ways to say it. So we call it first tone, second tone, third tone, fourth tone. I know you already know this, so I'm telling our YouTube audience. First tone would be like this, straight line. Yes. First tone, ma. Thank you, ma. First tone would be ma. And this means like mama, right? Like mommy? Yes. Okay. And then second tone, the line goes up. And so we would say ma, right? Okay, and then the third tone, it's going to go start up higher and go down and then come up again. So it's gonna be ma, like that, right? Can you say it? Ma. And this means horse, right? Yes. Okay, and then the fourth tone is going to be ma. Ma. Okay. Does that yes. have any meaning? Does this mean anything? With yes, this? but it has fifth tone. It's called ma. Oh, the fifth tone is the little dot, right? Yes. Ma. Ma. Okay. So I know that first tone 
is like your mom, your mother. Can you say that for us? Ma. Okay. Second tone goes up. Does this have any meaning, this word? Ma. Yeah, does that no. mean? No. That doesn't no. mean anything, right? Yes. All right, third tone. Ma. And that means horse. And fourth tone. Ma. And does that have any meaning? Yes. What does that mean? Um, it's very special. Okay. It's very special, but I don't know the English. Okay. And then this with the dot is just ma. Ma. Okay. Ma has a mini meaning. And that's what we put at the end of a question, right? Ni hao ma. Right. If we want to say, how are you? Right? Yes. So those are the tones. And so you, we can see them here when they're saying hello. And they have, well, they made their third tone look like this. And I made it look like this. But by this, they mean the third tone. But actually, yeah. you don't. Actually, it is like yours. Oh, the main. So they In Chinese, do. it's like yours, okay. actually. Well, here, they made a little mistake because how. How. Tone. How. Fourth tone should be third tone. Yeah. They wrote it like me how. And we don't say that. We don't say it like that. So this, say it like me how. Right. This should be third tone. And then if we have two or two syllables next to each other, two characters next to each other that are both third tone, third tone, third tone, we're going to change this one to be second tone for speaking. So we'll yes. say me how, right? Yes. And so that is how we say hello. So they have, the author of this book has written it incorrectly. And every time we see it, we will have to fix it. So it says, ni hao. Ni All right. Hao. Thank you. Yeah. And she did, she did give the right pronunciation here. It's like your knee, but we have to say it. Mm -hmm. And then it's like the word how, but we have to say how. So it's me yes. how. Okay. Now the next word she gives is goodbye. And she, Zai jian. Yes. Can you say that again? Zai jian. Zai jian. So she does have the tones correct here. Or we can say bye-bye. It's in Chinese too. Oh, can you say that for us? Bye-bye. Oh, it's right. in Chinese too. Oh. As that word in Chinese too. Okay. And then she has, so this is him saying, my name is Jack. And, Jack. and I think the tones she has here are correct. So third tone. So this here, wo, that means I, wo, I or my. And then this part right here, jiao. That is the part that is name is. And then Jack. So it's wo, jiao, Jack. Is that right? Yes. Do you want to say it for us? Wo jiao Jack. Okay. Now, this one I found interesting because the author is using the Taiwan Chinese way of saying where and not the Beijing Chinese way of saying where. So in Beijing, they would say nar. But here in Taiwan, we say nali. Nah. Although, because it's <laughs> because it's zai nali when it is uh, maybe ten years ago, maybe long time ago. Or, um, I don't know, but um, a time ago they said zai nali, but the But the but someone changed it into 
在哪里？在哪里？在哪里 ？So let's. What does your mom think? 在哪儿？在大陆？在哪儿？在哪儿 ？Right. That's in Beijing, right? Or in China? Yeah. All right. Well, let's look at the tones and see if they did the tones here correctly. Is this correct that it should be fourth tone? Ah! Hang on. Is this correct that this should be fourth tone and second tone and third tone? No, it's not. It's not second tone. Okay, so it's what? third tone. Nah. Okay, so let's get this straight. This should be third. Yes, I not Li. And then, how about Li? What tone should Li? Zai na Li, three. Okay, so this one should be three, and this one should be three. So it's Zai na Li, right? Yes. Okay. Do you want to double check with your mom on that? No. <laughs> okay. Zai. Nali. All righty. So I I did think though that when we had two third tones next to each other, that maybe we say this one a little bit more like second tone. Sai Nali. But the big like third or second um the middle. It's a bit like that. Okay. But bit like third tone. Okay. They're pretty close. All yes. right, I think that is our Chinese words for the book. So not very many. These are actually words that Miss Camp knows. So that's kind of fun for me. All right, and then we have just, I think, four more gadgets to look at and then the story starts. This one here is called the Map Mate. And this is the instruction manual for the gadgets of the secret agents. Instruction manual means the directions for how to use it. So that, that would be important. You know, it's really funny. There's a lot of people in the world who buy something from the store and then they, it, they come home and they put it together and there's an instruction manual that tells them how to put it together and how to use it and what all the different knobs and buttons mean. And so many people never open up that book. They never look at the directions. They say, oh, I don't need the instruction manual. I'm a smart person. I can figure this out all by myself. And most of the time, well, I don't know if it's most of the time, but many times they end up getting very confused. It's, it's yes, but last time when I am doing a Lego, I don't open a book and I can do it. Do you know why? 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 It has a code and I can use the iPad. Oh, interesting. Wow, very clever. All right, well, this is called the Map Mate. So when you're lost or you need to get somewhere fast, use the GPF. Remember, this is the name of the organization, the secret organization or group of kids who are secret agents around the world. And they have a map mate. This clever gadget, remember the word gadget just means like a tool, usually a tool that uses technology in some way, and it can help you. This clever gadget receives signals from satellites in space to give you a map of any city or town in the world. It sounds like a fancy GPS. It can also show you how to get from one place to another using directional arrows to guide the way. Now it sounds like Google Maps. <laughs> So that will give you directions and help you know where you are. So that's important. This is called the laser burst. The GPS laser burst is a handheld laser that emits a powerful white light capable of slicing through almost anything. You know what? It reminds me of the bat of the flashlight on uh, on my phone. 
So watch this. I'll hold up my phone and then I'll turn the flashlight on. Are you ready? Don't get blinded. See it? <laughs> it's bright light, isn't it? <laughs> but maybe if the room was black and I turn this on, maybe you could see a white light go across the room. And that would be like a laser beam. And it's back at you. You just go there and go back. You can bounce back. Yes. This is perfect when you need to burn a quick hole. Yeah, so a laser is different from a flashlight. A laser can actually, it depends on the kind of laser, but some kinds of laser can actually cut through things. So you might have seen in a movie or something where someone is cutting a circle in some glass and they use the laser and they just go around in a circle and then they can ping, pop the circle of glass right out. I've seen that in movies where there's a thief or a robber that's trying to steal a diamond from a museum. And so they have a special laser tool that they use for cutting the glass to pop the glass out and stick their hand in and take out the diamond and run and hope they don't get caught. So perfect when you need to burn a quick hole, start a campfire. Sounds like it can also make fire. Like if you shine it at some dry leaves, maybe the leaves will go poof and light on fire or cut through something hard. So that's this tool. Sounds like it could also be a little dangerous. All right, two more gadgets. This one is called the secret language decoder. You know, this sounds like it might be the most important gadget for Miss Camp. I can't quite tell from this picture what it looks like, but when you need to figure out what someone or something is saying, and you don't understand the language that they are speaking, use the GPS secret language decoder. It's like Google Translate. To decipher foreign text, push the read button. To translate speech, push listen and wait for the translation to appear on the screen. You know, so far, most of these gadgets, I think could be handled just by um, my iPhone. <laughs> I got my Google Maps, which, is, which has a GPS. I have my Google Translate. However, I do not have a laser that can cut through glass or start a fire. <laughs> we should talk to Apple about that. All right, then our last one here. Again, I can't quite tell from this picture what it looks like, but this is a motion sensor. The GPS motion sensor looks like a coin but it's actually a high tech. This tech comes from the word technology. High tech motion detecting device. So it can tell if something is moving. Just peel off the fake backing to stick it in place. Once it is attached, it will send a signal to your watch phone if anything moves within 10 feet of its range. Well, that seems like it could be useful. At first, when I read motion sensor, I'm thinking, oh, actually the iPhone can't do this, but the, um, is it called the iWatch by Apple? It's like a watch, but it's by Apple. Is it called the iWatch? Is that what it's called? That has a, um, like a motion sensor where if you have it on and you fall down, it can actually send you a like emergency message and say, do you need help? Should we call emergency for you? Are you okay? <laughs> so it can tell if you actually fall down on the ground. That's kind of like a motion sensor. Okay. Here we are, the beginning. Chapter one, the throw. Now, I, we're gonna see this word down here. Have you heard of the word judo? Judo is kind of like Taekwondo. Have you heard of Taekwondo? Yeah. So you might have some friends in your class at school that do Taekwondo or something like this. There's different kinds. I do Taekwondo. Oh, you do? I was wondering if you do. You know, um, my friend Sherry, her son Ryan also does Taekwondo. I know. He taught me before. Oh, he and did. I taught him before. And uh, 
Kristen did a little bit of Taekwondo one year at school when she was in, I don't know, maybe third or fourth grade. Not, she didn't do it for very long. But um, a lot of kids in Taiwan do Taekwondo and Judo is similar. So there are some activities and things that happen in this book that might make more sense to you than to me because I don't know anything about it. All right, so Jack and his mom, that's the, English, the British way of saying mom, drove into the village hall car park. So the car park would be a parking garage in the village hall. I'll pick you up in an hour, she said. Jack opened the door, quickly waved goodbye and shut the door behind him. His mom had some grocery shopping to do. She put the car in gear and pulled away. Every weekend, 20 kids, including Jack, met to learn judo from Mr. Baskin, one of the best judo instructors in Great Britain. Great Britain is another name for the UK. And we looked at that map. Was it just yesterday? Oh, here I have two of them. You know, everything in color here is the United Kingdom or the UK. I'm not 100% sure if Great Britain is exactly the same as the UK or if it's just part of the UK. You know, maybe it's just Wales and England, you know, this part down here. I'm not sure. Seems like there's an awful lot of names for these countries. We have, we have England, we have the UK or the United Kingdom, we have Great Britain, and people who are from England, we call them British. <laughs> so there are a lot of different names. In Chinese, I think it's just Ingwan, right? Ingwan, is that right? Or no, that just means English. Uh, American yes. is American is Meguoran, right? Yes. So, what do you call someone from England? Do you know? No, America is England, and and America is, is yes. What did you say? America is Meguor. Yes. And British and England is Ingwer. Okay. And Scotland is Ireland, maybe. Oh, uh -huh. I'll ask my mom. All right, well, we'll get back to that on, let's get back to that on a different day because we want to go ahead and start our story. Judo is a type of martial art from Japan. Thanks to Mr. Baskin, Jack had already earned his yellow belt. Oh, I think so has Ryan. How about you? What I have it too. Okay, good. Not only was judo recommended by the GPF, it was something that Jack loved doing. As he entered the building, he spotted his friends, Richard and Charlie. They were also dressed in the judo uniform called a, I have no idea how you say that, judogi? Judogi? Do you know? Yes, judogi. judogi. In Chinese, um, it is Taichuan Dao, or okay. we can say Kong Sou Dao. So that's the white jacket, right? And we're going to see the rest of the kids on the next page here, right over here. And so I think this is Jack right here. So then we also have the trousers, the white trousers. Those would be the pants with a special belt tied around the waist. Jack walked over to say hi, but almost at the same time, Mr. Baskin yelled out to the class. Okay, everyone, he said, let's begin. 
Jack went over to the edge of the mat, tidied up his judogi, and tossed off his flip-flops. Then he, Richard, Charlie, and the rest of the class stepped onto the mat and waited for instructions. Hmm. Mr. Baskin said, you see what he's doing? What do you think he's doing? Is that the floor? Is yeah, he's on, on the floor. Yeah, he's on the floor. That's very weird. I know. Well, let's read what it says. Maybe the person who drew the picture drew the picture in a weird way. So Mr. Baskin says, floor work, commando style, he added. Everyone knew what to do. Hurrying to one side of the mat, the first row of students dropped to the floor and lay on their stomachs. Then they used their elbows to pull themselves across the mat, like soldiers in a trench. Almost as soon as they had finished, Mr. Baskin shouted another command. So he's using his elbows to help him move across the floor while he's lying on his stomach. We have to remember this is not Taekwondo and it's not being done in Japan or Taiwan. It's over in England. So they might be doing things a little differently. All right, so then the teacher says, cartwheels, he said. Jack could hear the rest of the boys sigh in dread. That means they don't like doing this. While the girls in the class loved doing cartwheels, it was difficult for Jack and the other boys to get their legs around. Do you know what a cartwheel is? It's when, have you ever done a handstand where you are standing up and then you, you lean over and you put both hands on the ground and then you swing your whole body up so it's upside down and you can walk on your hands. Your hands are on the ground and your feet are up in the air. Have I you know I can do that. Okay. Well, a cartwheel would be if you are kind of doing that, but you're doing it a little bit more sideways and one hand at a time. And so you put your one hand down and then your whole body is going to go up in the air with your feet up in the air. And then your other hand goes down and then you end up spinning around and standing on your feet again. So you're actually going upside down and then right side up, but you're not doing it front. You're doing it sideways, one hand at a time. That's called a cartwheel. Have you ever done that? Maybe you have, but I just didn't explain it very well. <laughs> Jack did his best. And when he had made it across the mat, he heard Mr. Baskin call everyone back to the center. They returned to the middle, sat back on their heels and listened carefully to what the teacher had to say. Uh-oh, he's got some Japanese words coming up, and I don't know how to speak Japanese. I can only say konnichiwa. Do you know what that means? Yes. You do? I can speak many. Really? Because I'm learning Japanese now. Really? So what did I just say? Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa is, um, good night. I thought it was hello. <laughs> you know, Kristen wants to learn Japanese. I think it's very cool that you're learning Japanese. Well, let's see. The teacher says, can anyone tell me what Hansoku Make? I think that's Make. It looks like make, but I think they say Make. Hansoku Make means, he asked. Jack knew the answer. He raised his hand. Disqualification. What a long word. I want to count the letters in that word. It's not too often we see such a long word. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's not very many 16 letter words in English. That's a big one. Disqualification means you are out. 
you must have broken a rule or done a foul or done something that's that you're not allowed to do and so it means you're out of the competition you you lose yes said mr baskin pleased that the first answer of the day was a correct one and what causes a disqualification he asked You know, I like the way that at the bottom of the page, you see Jack running to the next page. <laughs> All right, we're going to stop here in a minute. But what causes, a, what causes a disqualification? Charlie's hand shot up, putting your fingers up an opponent's sleeve, he answered. Well, said Mr. Baskin. That wouldn't cause a hansoku make. Can anyone tell me what putting your hands up an opponent's sleeve would cause? Oh, this book is going to have italics also, but they're a little bit harder to see. Uh, this looks like it's in italics. Can you see the difference between the italic letters and the regular letters? Yes, but a little bit. Right. And Actually, this one was two. So they're, they're just a little bit wavy, a little bit wiggly, kind of look like they're falling over just a little bit. Now your opponent is the person that you're fighting against. And so what would happen if you did that? Richard raised his hand and said, a uh, Shido? We don't know what that is yet, so we have to keep reading. Excellent, Mr. Baskin said. Yes, putting your fingers up someone's sleeve would cause a shido or small penalty. So that means a shido is a small penalty. Now they are going to be looking for some other ways to get disqualified when they are playing when they are doing judo. But this is where we are going to. Uh, stop right here for today. All righty. So very good to see you this evening, Archie. I think we're going to enjoy this story very much. And so I'm looking forward to what happens and why Jack needs to know some judo. Okay, time to say so long. So long. Bye, Archie.